Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is an awesome day in the Lord. Amen. Wednesday, December the 5th, 2018. As you scroll on here and join us for today's word and a celebration of truth. Amen. Let us enter in with thanksgiving woo, and praise in Jesus' name. God bless you as you start to join in. And we're just going to be expectant. Amen. Expectant and hopeful. Hallelujah. God bless you as you join in. I already see some people. I see Jean. God bless you. Thank you for joining in, Jean. So good to see you. I also see Marilyn. I love you, Marilyn. So awesome to have you on here, sister. It is going to be an awesome day. Hey, Eva. So good to see you. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. God is going to have something so awesome and magnificent that you're going to leave with such a satisfaction of the word of truth. Amen. And I'm going to wait just another minute as people start joining in and just give people just a moment to join in with us. And we will get started in the Word. Amen. Thank you for joining in today. I see Diane. So good to see you. Love you. Awesome to have you on here. Thank you, Jean Pack. It is a blessing for us to be together. Amen. Hey, Kelly. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. An awesome day today as God brings a word of encouragement. I just love the Word of God. Because it has such an exhortation. Even in God's admonishment, there is grace and exhortation, a lifting up by Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, Bill, thank you for joining in. So good to have you on here. As you join on, saints of God, I see Nancy. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. So awesome to have you. I receive that blessing, Kelly. I receive it in Jesus' name. And so as we get ready to go, let us get started in prayer. Amen. God, we thank you for the power of Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that you have such an anointing of grace and strength provided from eternity, the age to come, the kingdom of heaven. And that, God, you bring that grace in and upon us today as we are strengthened mightily by your word with a wisdom from above to know that we are endued with power and strength that the kingdom of heaven is near and we can comprehend it in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Love you, Matt. So good to have you on here. And I'm so glad I just thought about it because FYI, I will not be on Friday because I will be taking time with my family on Friday and spending time with them. It is awesome to be here today and to hear what Holy Spirit is going to bring. And it is a word of truth. And if you have seen the other three videos that I've done, it is a three-part series on the harvest. It includes John 4 and Song of Solomon 4. And I wanted to emphasize this about the last teaching of part three of the harvest before I forget it. As it related to the Tesseract, and you're probably saying, what in the world is the Tesseract, right? Watch part three, get on my YouTube channel and subscribe, and you can go to part three and find out what the Tesseract is. And the reason I want to bring this up is before I forget it, is when I have taught on the entire book, A Song of Solomon, I did a workbook on it, and I will be doing that teaching in actually four books. I'll break that one workbook up into four books and bring that teaching alive as never before. You will absolutely love it. But I wanted to demonstrate that those eight chapters, I actually call acts and do it almost like a theatrical play in my presentation with a workbook teaching and I have act one, scene one, act two, scene two and it's each of those chapters and so I just wanted to say this before I forget that the fourth act, because remember tesser means four, that the fourth act is the act of Song of Solomon. It's the fourth scene. Amen? So watch that and be encouraged and edified in the word about the harvest. So let's look at the harvest today and what Holy Spirit is speaking to us and where God is bringing us into a greater understanding. Understand that before your harvest, as it relates to the Word of God being made known, not only in here, but also externally, and that is where the promises of God come in, that is indicated, especially in the midst of our sifting. Amen. And specifically to get into this area, Let's go to Luke 22 to get some understanding because remember, faith comes by hearing the word and that word hearing actually means understanding. Hey, Janice, God bless you. Amen, Daniel. So let's look at 
that scripture and let's get some faith. Amen. Luke 22. God is just going to bless us. Hallelujah. I cannot wait for the blessings that God has for us. Amen. So let's look at Luke 22 and let's get some power and understanding by God's word of truth and see the anointing and grace that God has given us to endure the sifting. Amen. As you look at Luke 22, let's go specifically to verse 28. Verse 28, because we're talking about the harvest. And remember, the harvest comes after there has been a sifting. And when there has been a sifting, guess what? That good grain, as it reveals in Scripture in Matthew 3, 11 and 12, about the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire, where John the Baptist declares, I come to baptize you unto water, unto a baptism of repentance. But there is one who comes after me, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He shall baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And his winnowing fan cannot be put out. And he will burn up the chaff. And he will bring in that grain. He will bring it in into the storehouse. So let's look at this indication and understand this sifting because in the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire, in fact, Holy Spirit wants us to go there first. So let's go to Matthew 3, 11 and 12. I love to read the scriptures, especially on the Amplified because the Amplified really brings it to life, bringing out that Greek and that Hebrew. Amen. Matthew 3, 11. Let's go to um, verse 12. His winnowing fan, his shovel, his fork is in his hand and he will thoroughly clear out and clean his threshing floor, and gather and store his wheat in his barn. But the chaff he will burn up with fire, and it cannot be put out. So when we look at that wheat, that is the standing grain harvest revealed in Mark 4, after the core parable of the sower of seed, and after the revelation starting in verse 21 and going through verse 26, about bringing a lamp into a room you don't bring a lamp into a room to be put under a bed. You put it on top of the table in order that the light of that lamp fills the whole room. Amen. And then immediately after that, we see scripture say, as Jesus says, that which is hidden shall be made known. And he emphasizes, be careful what you're hearing. Because whatever you're hearing, whatever you give your soul to, will be measured unto you back unto you the knowledge of it and that revealing is is the more that we put into the word the more commitment the more faith the more that we invest in reading and learning about the word that measure by the power of holy spirit shall be what supplied back unto us hey kathy forbes i love you and so as we look at this we're going to get some understanding because right after that lamp and right after you getting more measurement added unto you in the Mark 4 parables revealed after the core parable of the sower of seed, immediately Jesus describes the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like a seed that's scattered out in a field. And then there's a blade. And then in time there is a stalk. There is grain. And then there is the reaping of harvest because it is what a standing grain harvest. In fact, let's go to that. Glory to God. God is taking us all over the place. I love it when Holy Spirit does this because faith comes by hearing the word, by understanding the word. Amen. So let's look at Mark 4 and let's look at that parable right after the lamp. Scripture says, and the kingdom of God, verse 26, is like a man who scatters seed upon the ground. And then he continues sleeping. And rising night and day, while the seed sprouts and grows and increases, he knows not how. The earth produces, acting by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, listen to that, saints, and permits immediately, he sends forth the reapers and puts in the sickle, because the harvest stands ready. Woo! Hallelujah. The harvest stands ready. And so we're comprehending that in the midst of the sifting 
of the issues of our heart that God is exposing that which is not of Him and He is causing us to apprehend those things have to be consumed. Woo! Thank you, Lord. And that is called deliverance. And He consumes that issue of reproach by the Spirit of the Lord. Isaiah 61, He has anointed me with the Spirit of the Lord. He has anointed me to preach the gospel and the good news. And that anointing does what? It binds up the brokenhearted. It lifts off weights, cloaks of heaviness. It brings forth garments of praise. And it causes dungeons to be opened to set the captives free. So in this grace and this anointing Holy Spirit comes in and upon us in the midst of our sifting to get ready for the shifting. Amen. Now let's go into Luke 22. Uh, let's go into Luke 22. And we're going to get specifically in a scripture right here as it relates to Peter sifting. Now I know that I have taught on this a gazillion times. But Holy Spirit wants to bring this to point today. And He wants to bring a revealing of this scripture to our soul. Amen. Because we are leaving 2018 and we are going into 2019 with a greater grace to comprehend the harvest. Do you understand that you're standing in the midst of the harvest? The kingdom of God is like seeds that are scattered. And those seeds, as we're sleeping and rising up, we don't know how they're growing. Why? Because it is only by Holy Spirit. It is by the light of truth that God releases and pours out in and upon our soul. And as Holy Spirit brings understanding, amen, then Holy Spirit brings revelation to our spirit man, and that brings revelation to our soul, our heart, and our mind, where we comprehend, we apprehend, hallelujah, the scriptures that have been sown, the seeds, that they're no longer hidden, but now they've come to light. Now they are what? A standing grain harvest. Woo! And remember how we did the other day, as we looked at summer, that word was theros. The word harvest actually comes from the Greek word from which summer comes from, and it means heat. And so this heat is the fire, is the sifting for the shifting. For those of you who have heard me talk about different baptisms of Holy Spirit and fire that I have experienced in my life, I've experienced numerous, many times, amen, because Holy Spirit comes according to the need. And it's not that God knows our need, it's that we know our need, amen. And when we know our need, what happens? God touches us. God shines the light upon us. And He brings forth a manifestation of the harvest that is within our soul. Amen. And so, as I look at the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire, one instance in which I was baptized in Holy Spirit and fire in an upper room, in a Sunday school room, as I was listening to Leonard Ravenhill on a CD, it was the first time I'd ever heard Leonard Ravenhill. And I just heard the power of God. And all of a sudden, this fire started going through my bones. And I just started sliding down in my seat, profusely weeping uncontrollably. And immediately, I started repenting of everything that God was bringing up to my mind. And He would bring this up to my mind, this up to my mind, this up to my mind. And right there in Sunday school, I am just a blubbering mess, and I'm getting close to the floor, and I'm just repenting. After Sunday school, Rich is helping me to get out of the room, and I'm leaning upon him, and I am just a blubbering mess, just weeping, and I am repenting of everything now that God is showing me of what I've said to Rich, or how I did not treat him with the absolute respect, or how it was not with complete love in different instances. And I'm telling you, when this fire of Holy Spirit comes upon you, whatever is impure inside of the vessel, it is going to come out. And it is better, hallelujah, to do it in the quiet place of your home than to do it publicly. Because I'm telling you, a lot of people want the glory of God, 
and they're praying for revival, but they are not ready because they have not gotten their heart in the right state. They are still resisting the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. A lot of people want the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire, but inside of their person, there is a struggle. There is a wrestling that they do not know of where they are actually resisting the Holy Spirit and fire. And so God is looking for a yielded vessel that is crying out to Him who wants to receive this power. And when this power comes in and upon you, I'm telling you, it is going to utterly destroy and burn up the chaff that is within you, the very things that war against the nature of Christ Jesus, that carnal nature that is in you, it is going to burn it up and you are going to be purified, hallelujah. And then that grain, that word that is in you, glory to God, all of a sudden it becomes a harvest. It becomes a standing grain. And God says through that baptism, he brings that grain into the barn. And that represents the works that we walk in in faith. That that baptism of Holy Spirit has brought forth such a purification, hallelujah, that it has brought a works of God inside of our lives where it's faith. Where James even talks about in James 2, you say you have faith, well let me show you my faith by my works. Now understand this, saints of God, we have to walk circumspectly and we have to walk in prudence. Because without realizing it, our heart could get lifted up, as I revealed in the last couple of messages, as it relates to the harvest. Because in that place of drawing near to God, if we did not walk circumspectly or in prudence, then we can get too familiar with God. And in this familiarity, we do not know the fear of the Lord. And instead, we profane the nature of God, not intentionally. This is not anything we want to do intentionally. There is no condemnation. But it's an area in our heart that is resisting this fire. It is resisting the anointing. It's resisting the call. Now we might say, oh yes God, take me into the call. Take me into the call. I want to go into the call. But we do not know subconsciously are things in our heart that are hidden that we know not know, know not of and that those things that are hidden inside of us are actually resisting the call that God has called us into and how do we know this we know this through Peter I thank God for Peter because it gives me so much faith it gives me so much understanding I mean hey Sherry so good to see you I love you so let's look at Luke 22 and let's start in verse 28. Amen. And you are those, this is Jesus speaking, and you are those who have remained throughout and persevered with me in my trials. This is Jesus speaking. And he's talking to his disciples for those that remained. And he said, you are those that have remained. And what does this mean? He makes clear clarity of this. And he says, because you have stayed with me, not in your trials, but in my trials. That you did not leave me because of my trials. But now also comprehend it as this. That the word of God in us, as it matures and it comes into a harvest, that as we hold on to that word and we remain with the word, hallelujah, we do not deny it. And we do not leave it. We do not resist it. Glory to God that that word brings a grace into us. And let's see what this grace is. In verse 29, Jesus says, And as my Father has appointed a kingdom and conferred it on me. So what now? What is Jesus referring to now? He is referring to, look, you have stayed with me. You have not left me. And my Father has conferred to me a kingdom. And so what, watch what Jesus tells the disciples. So do I confer to you this privilege and decree. What is the decree? The kingdom. And what was the core parable in Mark 4? About the kingdom of God is like a seed that is scattered. And so the harvest that we're looking at 
is the kingdom of God that is made known in us. Now remember, there's two distinctions in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God, as in Luke 17, 20 and 21, is where? In our hearts. And Jesus said to the Pharisees that they were in an evil imagination asking for a sign of the kingdom of God. He says the kingdom of God does not come with signs, but it's in man's hearts. We also see this prophesied in Ecclesiastes 3.10, where it says eternity is planted in your heart. So now this does not come with signs. That is salvation. But now the kingdom of heaven is what Jesus preached. It's what John the Baptist preached. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. That comes with signs and wonders. And the first demonstration that the kingdom of heaven has been made known is how? That devils are cast out. That is the first sign that the kingdom of heaven has come. And so there is a greater manifestation as God brings forth the kingdom of God, which is who He is. He is the all-powerful. He is the almighty. He is able. He is love. He has is, he is brought forth an anointing where we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. And so as we come to know our salvation in God, we come to know what? And apprehend by the power of Holy Spirit. By that baptism of Holy Spirit and fire, we comprehend and we lay a hold of the kingdom of heaven. So let's look at the saints of God because Holy Spirit is driving this point home for a specific reason. Because he says that many of us are resisting the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. And understand that I did not know what I was going to speak on even when I brought up Facebook Live today, I had no clue. And God has brought all these scriptures together. And He's speaking. And I hear the Father speaking. And He is bringing this message today because He wants to advance us in the time of harvest. Amen. So let's watch how brilliant Holy Spirit is. And how Holy Spirit is going to combine scriptures and show us the things that are fenced and hidden in order that we no longer resist the Father, and we're going to repent. After I get through preaching, amen, we're going to repent. And after you watch this video, I encourage you, take communion sometime today, amen, and ask for the anointing of Holy Spirit and fire. And so let's go further as we look on in Luke 22, and we look at verse 31. After Jesus has spoken about the kingdom, amen, Simon, Simon! Listen, Satan has asked excessively that all of you be given up to him out of the power and the keeping of God, that he might sift all of you like grain. But I have especially prayed for you, Peter, that your own faith may not fail. And when you yourself have turned again, strengthen and establish the brethren. And Simon said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to both to prison and to death. But Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, before a single cock shall crow, this day you shall with three times utterly deny that you know me. Now understand this, saints of God, that Peter did not know what was in his heart. And he was being prepared, although he did not know this immediately, that this sifting had to come in order to address and confront the things in Peter that would resist the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire in Acts 2. Do you understand? Had Peter not gone through this sifting, he would have resisted the power of Holy Spirit in Acts 2. Jesus knew his heart. And God had given grace as it relates even in Job. As God bragged on Job. And the enemy was given permission to sift Job. To some measure all the way up to not taking his life. He could touch Job in other areas. 
but he could not take his life. And that is interesting because Job actually in Hebrew means persecuted. And so when we look at Job, that actually reveals some of the areas in which we are able to get understanding. And that understanding comes so that we can comprehend the power and grace by which God brings us understanding where we are resisting God. We might not realize it, but it is an area in which it is hidden in our heart. So let's look at this and let's get some understanding. Here is Simon Peter. He thinks, I'm going with Jesus all the way, all the way. I've remained with him in his trials. I've stayed with him. And glory to God, he is conferring the kingdom unto me. Now understand that the disciples know that Jesus is leaving soon. And they also have just gotten out the argument about who was the greatest amongst them. Even in the midst of that, Jesus lovingly rebukes them and tells them that the greatest among them is a servant. And that Jesus did not come to be master, but he came to serve. And as we see this transition, this is the area of pride that is in Peter that is resisting the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. There's still something in Peter, although Peter is clueless to it, that is involved with his works, not God's works. And so as this relates, let us look at this sifting. Jesus calls Peter immediately upon delivering the message. He calls him Simon, and he shouts it. How do we know this? Because Scripture has it indicated twice. That is the exclamation mark in the word, a repetition. And that repetition, as we look at it, is Jesus grabbing a hold of Simon and comprehending and apprehending his attention and saying, Simon, listen, Satan has asked that you, all of you, be put into his hands, that he can sift you like grain. But I have already prayed for you that when you return, you will strengthen the brethren. Because up to this point, after they get through with the discussion about who is the greatest among them, Peter still thinks that this is about him. And God is bringing a revelation where Peter has to be emptied of himself in order to receive the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. And now listen, says of God, Holy Spirit is being so circumspect and gentle with us all. Holy Spirit is bringing a word of encouragement and a word of knowledge. And the Father is saying that so many of us are resisting the anointing and the baptism of fire and Holy Spirit. And like Peter, we do not know what is inside of us that wrestles against this, against this, but we find out that it is pride. Peter thinks, no, I'll go with you to death. I'll go with you to prison. But watch what happens when this comes to the mark. And you know what's interesting today? This is what God told me today, and I can't remember if I put it on Facebook. I wrote it somewhere. I probably sent it in a message. I wrote it on Facebook. I can't remember. But this is what God showed me, and it's absolutely truth right here. And he said, Robin, you think you know what you'll do when the time comes, but you won't know until the time comes, and you will know what you will do. Now, this is the same thing with Peter, saints of God. Peter thinks that when Jesus is persecuted, can I say, when the word is persecuted, that we're going to be fine and dandy, and we're going to go along with the word to jail, with the word to death. And God is revealing Peter's heart, and he's showing him, you think that you'll do this, but this is what you're going to find out, that when the time comes, you're not going to do it. Why? Because Peter was resisting God. And this place of pride had to be broken in Peter in order for him to receive, as it relates to Acts 2, the anointing 
of Holy Spirit and fire. Woo! I'm just going to turn around that. This is it, saints of God. Oh, my goodness. God is bringing so much up to me. There are so many times when the Holy Spirit and fire will be upon me and I will tell people things or I will be whatever God's called me to be or I'll deliver the message that God's called me to deliver. And it is funny how many people will run away and they will desert you for a season and they won't hang around you for a season because they cannot handle the sifting. And they don't want to be sifted and they don't realize they are resisting Holy Spirit. They are resisting the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. They are resisting the word because pride in their heart keeps them from coming to receive the word. And in those seasons, when I see different people that will come to me and they'll want the word for a season or they'll get the word for a season and they'll get all full up. But when it comes to really confronting where they are resisting God and getting to the issue of pride, they will hightail it and they will run away for months and they won't come back because they are so offended by the truth and they are resisting the anointing. They are resisting the call. They are resisting Holy Spirit. Those of you who are in my ministry, you know that I am like someone, I rip band-aids off. I'm not like a mother that gets little soap suds and goes under the skin of a 13-year-old or 20-year-old that has a band-aid on them and say, oh, I'm so sorry that this band-aid stuck to you. I'm so sorry. Now, I would probably do it with a one-year-old. I'd probably, do, I would definitely do it with a baby, but I wouldn't do that with a 13-year-old, a 22-year-old, and I'm not going to do it with a 60-year-old. I'd get that band-aid and rip it off, hallelujah, and I would confront the issue. And it sometimes does not look pretty, and it doesn't look nice to that person, but nowhere in the Word of God does it say Jesus was nice. It says He was kind, but do not confuse that with appearing nice. Jesus was love, and He got the whip out, hallelujah, and He cleaned up the temple with the whip. And that is what God showed me as it relates today of how we are resisting Him. As I have explained those that will be with me for a season, and all of a sudden they got an illumination that I'm not of God or that something's wrong. No, the devil has convinced them of their offense and their pride that is like a baby blanket that they are not willing to let go. And as a result, they backslide from the truth and they run away from truth and they do not remain planted in truth. And instead, they go to false prophets and they go to false teachers who will get that sudsy soap and put it on their leg and keep the band-aid on and gradually try to take it off. And all they're going to do is to put infection back in that thing. They're not going to clean it out because they do not have a covenant message, a salt covenant message that can heal the wound. Instead, they have prophylized and all this jibberty jabber that does nothing but gives you a meth kick or a cocaine hit spiritually and gives you the excuse and reason of why you can stay bound up and not come out of that place. Do you understand this, saints of God? The false teachers and the false prophets are nothing but spiritual meth addicts, drug addicts, drug suppliers, giving people in the church a spiritual drug of the counterfeit of Holy Spirit so they can stay asleep. And when Holy Spirit comes in the baptism of fire, hallelujah, He comes to burn up the chaff, to burn up pride, to burn up areas, to burn up anger, to burn up bitterness, 
to burn up addictions in God is all power. And God is coming to us today and He is saying we have to stop resisting Holy Spirit. Like Peter, we are no different than Peter. And when a little persecution comes on behalf of the Word, we're like Peter, and we deny that we heard that word. Oh, I didn't hear that. That's not my, what I heard. I heard something else. Then you chose to run away from the word. You chose to go into your own vanity. And God is saying, we have to be confronted in the sifting that we are in. And he is bringing us strength. He is bringing us grace. Our Jesus, our high priest, he has already prayed for us, hallelujah, that when we return from this persecution, after we leave and when we return back, that glory to God, we will what? Strengthen the brethren. Why? Because we are the ones, hallelujah, who are prepared to receive the anointing of Holy Spirit and fire. So let's get to Acts 2. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Help me, Jesus. I had no clue Holy Spirit was going to bring this message. And since I won't be on Friday, watch this message again. Oh my goodness, this is so powerful. Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. Amen. And when, and it's funny because remember 4, the fourth dimension represents what? Harvest dimension. So let's look at the harvest, the standing grain harvest. Hallelujah that's brought into the barn, the power of the word of Holy Spirit inside of us, amen. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place, when suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like the rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house in which they were seating. And there appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were separated and distributed, which settled on each one of them. And they were filled, verse 4, remember 4 means the harvest? Here it is. And they were filled, diffused throughout their soul. Woo! They're becoming a barn. Woo! I'm just going to turn around on that. Remember, Jesus brings the wheat into the barn. What is the barn? The barn is is the temple of God, the house of Holy Spirit. When God takes us from a bomb and he makes us a barn, we are what? A storehouse. That is Deuteronomy 28, that our storehouses shall be full, that we, hallelujah, are a barn. We are a storehouse, hallelujah. So let's look at verse 4. And they were all filled and diffused throughout their soul with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different foreign languages, tongues, as the Spirit kept giving them clear and loud expression and each tongue in appropriate words. Do you understand this, saints of God? That in the time of the upper room, there is a chapter 1 to Acts, and that is the place where they stay. And they do not leave. And they pray. And they're assembled. And they are pressing into what? One thing. The baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. Had Peter not been sifted, as in Luke 22, and had he not gone through that sifting, and had Jesus not restored him, he would not have been ready for the Acts 2 baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. I love how Jesus puts it in John 21 as he restores Peter. When he restores Peter, he's fishing out in the water. Jesus is on land and he's cooking fish. And Peter is wanting to get a net. He left ministry and he went back to fishing. And Jesus tells him to cast the net on the other side of the boat. And that is when Peter knows it's Jesus. And he gets out and he runs to Jesus Christ. And he is sitting there while Jesus is feeding him. As Peter denied him three times, Jesus restores him by asking him three times, Peter, do you love me? And 
And Peter said, Lord, you know I do. You know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Jesus, you know I do. Tend my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Jesus, I love you. You know I do. Peter, feed my sheep. And this is what God said to me. As I felt unqualified, when I went through the sifting three, four, it was actually five years ago, I went through a major sifting. I wanted to leave ministry. And I wanted to get out. And I was just pressed in on every side, feeling so unqualified, so unworthy, and wanting to totally just run away. And this is what God told me. He said, Robin, do you see here that the qualification of Peter was only one thing? And it was what? Do you love me? It wasn't, Peter, you're so great. Peter, you're so awesome. The only qualification that Jesus had for Peter was, Peter, do you love me? And as I was giving all these excuses, well, God will da 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 and I had all these excuses to give God of why I could no longer walk in the call. All I kept hearing him say is, Robin, do you love me? And that is what God says to each of us today. How many of you are willing to no longer resist the Holy Spirit? How many of you are wanting God to carry you through the sifting so that you can come into the anointing of Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. So as we end here, saints of God, He wants you to know He loves you. And glory to God, I'm going to pray and you take communion sometime today and you be expectant with this prayer and with the message that God has delivered. Amen. God, we thank you for the power of Holy Spirit. We thank you, God that you are faithful. We thank you, Father, for this message, that it is a right now message, God. And we repent, Father God, of pride, of bitterness, of anger, of fear. God, we repent, Father God, of anything that is in our soul that has caused us to resist your Holy Spirit. And God, we say, bring us through the sifting, Father God, let us not resist Holy Spirit, but God, let your word, hallelujah, take deep root in our soul and reap a standing grain harvest as you bring us the anointing of grace of the baptism that Jesus Christ came to bring of Holy Spirit and fire, that God, you will bring such a fire, hallelujah, to burn up the chaff with your winnowing fan that you will flame it with, hallelujah. And yea, God, hallelujah, that you will bring the grain into the barn. And so, God, we thank you for this now word in due season. And we say, yes, Lord, have your way. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I speak to dis-ease in the natural and the spirit. And I take this sort of God's word and I cut the cords of infirmity and command it to loose you and go into the wilderness in Jesus' name. I take the sword of God's word and I cut the cords of divination off of the bellies of those that are oppressed. And I command the spirit of divination to loose you and go into the wilderness in Jesus' name. I take authority over the assignment of Leviathan. And I call in Psalm 74, 13 and 14, that God shall slay the dragon and cut off the dragon's heads. And that God shall cut up Leviathan and feed him to the creatures in the wilderness in Jesus' name. I call in Isaiah 27, 1, that God shall unsheathe the sword of the Lord and slay Leviathan in Jesus' name. And I take the sword of God's word and I cut the cords of Leviathan off of the minds of those that 
are watching and listening. And I command Leviathan to loose you and go into the wilderness in Jesus' name. And I take authority over the spirit of Jezebel and its tentacles that are in the spines of those that are oppressed, that are listening and watching. And I take the sword of God's word and cut the cords, the tentacles of Jezebel and command them to be uprooted and loose people, loose you and go into the wilderness in Jesus' name. And God, we call in the grace of Holy Spirit. I command heaviness be lifted off in Jesus' name. I command lying serpents be lifted off in Jesus' name. And I call forth the garment of God's expressive praise, hallelujah, to be upon you. And I speak grace, grace, grace to your mountain, to the areas of your soul that have resisted God. And I declare that that mountain is uprooted and cast into the sea in Jesus' name. And I declare the anointing of Holy Spirit and fire in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! I love you. Goodbye. So awesome to see you, and I will see you Monday. Amen.